I've been diving my whole life and I recently needed to acquire a new dive knife. Uh, it's not as easy as you would imagine. Uh, the devil's in the details and they matter. So this knife is a uh, rife. It's called the EDC Every Dive Carry Spearfishing Knife. It's uh, advertised as 4.5 inches. It's $64 on Amazon and it's 170 cm's uh, blade length. This has a very good blade design. Um, it's, it's able to dispatch fish easily. And that's very important because if you've speared a fish and it's wiggling and struggling, that is the number one thing that will attract sharks and that will excite them. So you want to be able to dispatch fish as quickly as possible to um, minimize the suffering of the fish and also to minimize uh, attracting and exciting sharks in the area. The strength of the blade needs to be adequate enough to pierce the skull of fish and to handle anything that you may need it to do while you're underwater. The blade needs to be corrosion resistant, if you're, especially if you're diving in salt water. Um, the serrations are excellent for cutting through rope, uh, fishing string, anything really tough. Uh, however, it is difficult to sharpen. So it's nice to have it, but you want to try and minimize its use. And I like the other half to be a smooth edge. And that's best because it's easy to sharpen. And so this could be your working edge on a regular day-to-day -day basis. And it's centered with a pointy end so that the, uh, the spine of the blade can support the tip uh, to pierce and go through whatever you may need it to. I am still waiting for a dive knife manufacturer to make a knife out of M390 Super Steel. It, uh, in, in my opinion, it's the best steel uh, which balances corrosion resistance and strength and edge retention. The handle is very visible. And that's nice because if you drop your knife, it makes it easier to find. The ergonomics of this knife are outstanding. It's the best I've ever seen in a knife. It's uh, rubberized and it's textured and it has a very nice uh, length to it. So my hands, even with gloves on, will fit very nicely. And if I poke something, my hand is not going to slip up the blade. It's uh, going to hold it very nicely. As far as the sheath. The uh, ability for the sheath to retain your knife is very important. I want it to be easy to go in and out, but I want it to stay in the sheath, uh, whether I'm upside down or if I bump on a coral or if it's in my dive bag, I don't want it to shake out and have a pointy knife exposed that somebody might step on or fall on. That could be a very dangerous situation. Um, so I take blade retention abilities very seriously. Uh, this rife sheath has these two plastic tabs on the sides and they um, they click in to the handle of the knife and it holds it very well. And to remove the knife, you just grab it and pull up and with the right amount of tension, those little plastic springs release and it works very well. To put the, the knife back into the sheath, there's a nice big hole. So it's hard to miss and you can slide your knife up, up this edge all the way inside and you're very not likely to stab yourself in that process. 
Uh, it also has nice drainage on the bottom so that if the, when this fills up with water, the water can drain out all the way to the tip out of the sheath. Now, I needed another dive knife because I recently got a, a wetsuit and I needed a weight belt with more weight to compensate for that. Uh, as far as how much weight you should put on, uh, you should put on just enough to where you're barely floating. Any more than that, and it could be dangerous if you black out, and any less, and it's going to be harder for you to dive. So... The way I like to secure the knife onto my person is on the weight belt. And there's a very specific reason for this. Uh, some knives attach to your leg and they use uh, mostly buckle straps or two clip-in um, buckles. The buckles are, um, the clips are easier to remove than the buckles, but still you're dealing with two small buckles and if you get tangled with that leg knife uh, underwater with some rope or under a coral or if you're in a cave and it's stuck and you can't get out uh, that could be a major problem so I like to keep my knives on my weight belt and this is what I've been using for the last 10 years so you have your weight belt and then your knife attaches to the outside of that, which allows it to protrude off of your person a little bit. So when you pull your knife, it's easy to get to with, uh, I can get to this one with both hands. And it's easy to put back because it's a little off of your hip. Uh, so that's kind of the perfect setup for me. And if this gets tangled onto a rock or onto a fishing string or rope while I'm underwater, I can just use the quick release and I swim up to the surface without a problem. So that's the setup I highly recommend um, for new and experienced divers alike. Uh, this is, again, the knife I've been using for the last 20 years. It uh, has a little retention clip right here. Half of this uh, handle is concave out here and this half is convex. Uh, this flat part kind of goes into the belt so that it, it slides in easier. And the concave part fits in your hand so you get a better grip. The length of this blade is longer than any of these modern knives that I've purchased from Amazon. Uh, this blade is 130 cm long. It is made of 420 stainless steel. It is half serrated, half smooth edge. And this knife has been utterly indestructible. Uh, I have painted it to make it stand out a little better in case it falls. Um, but I've been very happy with that knife and made by Omer. Another new offering from Koa is, uh, it's called Koa Dive Knife 4.5 inch with magnetic sheath for spear fishing. It's $60. Uh, the blade length is 110 cm's. Uh, it has a very high visibility handle and it has a magnetic sheath that is used as a retention for your blade. Works pretty good. I love the innovation. Uh, my only problem with it is that um, sometimes when I go to slide the knife in, it'll get caught behind the magnet pad. And I'll have to pull it back out and reset and then go in. It's kind of a minor, minor detail, but uh, that could cause you to lose your knife. If you go to put it in your air and you think you're, you're secure and, uh, you know, that can slip out rather easily. 
It has a screw in the back of the sheath to hold the magnetic retention pad. And this screw is mostly recessed. So that's not gonna bother you too much. Uh, it's a very nice knife. Um, the corrosion resistance is decent. Um, not as good as the Rife, but not too bad. Only, uh, only rusting on the uh, exposed bare metal parts. Uh, so I removed all the oil from these knives with uh, Dawn dish soap, then alcohol. And then I put salt water in a little cup and I put six of these knives into the salt water and I left them outside for one day. Uh, this was the corrosion resistant test that I did uh, to see how these knives would hold up. Um, generally speaking, you're gonna oil these knives and you're gonna rinse them off after every dive. But, you know, over the years, sometimes that may not happen and I wanna know how they're gonna hold up in that situation. So that's why I did that test. Um, these are my two favorite knives. Um, but uh, the Rife with that handle definitely gets the edge. The Koa has what looks to be a nice shape to it, but in your hand, it's very small. So if your hand doesn't fit in this portion of the knife, uh, it's gonna feel very awkward. You're not gonna get a lot of purchase on the handle. Whereas the Rife is pretty straight. Uh, not a, It doesn't bulge out as much. So no matter what shape hand you have, how big, how small, you're gonna be able to grip this well. And the texture on this is outstanding uh, versus the smooth texture on this knife. Uh, even though it is rubberized, it's not awful, but it's not as good as the Rife. The next knife is the uh, Sea Quantum Scuba Dive Knife with um, two pairs quick release buckle. This knife is the best $20 knife on the market in my opinion. The blade length is 87 cm's. Um, the sheath uh, seems very well built. It has a nice hole for the buckle or a leg strap and a leg strap. The retention uses uh, plastic springs on the inside. So you squeeze this to, hold, to pull your knife out. The blade has the backbone in the center. However, this knife is very thin. So I think this knife would work amazing for a snapper or anything under 20 pounds should be fine. Anything over 20 pounds, this knife might struggle, might bend. Um, it has half serrations, half smooth edge, which is my preference. And it's a very pointy knife. Very lightweight knife, super low profile, but the handle is surprisingly decent as far as your, your purchase on the knife because of how flat, how wide it is. Um, the retention mechanism works very well. And for $20, you can't beat it. Also, I did the corrosion test on this knife and it did better than the Koa, which is a $60 knife. Next up is the Cressy Grip Spear Knife. It's marketed as 6.8 inch. It's a nice short knife. Uh, the length of the blade is 79 cm's and the price on Amazon is $33. Um, this knife has a pretty good uh, ergonomic grip. Uh, it has some, some serrations 
on both the back and the front, which uh, give you a pretty good grip. The corrosion resistance is pretty good. It's a 420 J2 steel, half serration, half smooth edge, with the backbone in the center to a fine point. Uh, I like the shape and design of this blade. I just wish it was a little big, a little longer. It's, it's kind of short. So again, this is for your 20 pound and under fish. Uh, the next knife is called a spear fishing low volume point tip sharp dive knife. It's $34 on Amazon. Uh, this knife has multiple, you know, brand names. Uh, very common with, you know, things that come out of China. People just slap their brands on it, but it's all the same knife. So if it looks like this, it's probably the same exact knife. Um, it's it's stated that it's a stainless steel 420 J2, but um, you can see that that corroded pretty significantly in 24 hours of being exposed to the elements with uh, with a little bit of salt water. Um, so that isn't the greatest corrosion resistance, but the handle is very nice, very robust. This is a full tang knife. Uh, you can see the two screws that secure the blade to the handle. Um, it's very nice gripping and it, it does have some serrations on both sides which help with the grip. The shape of the blade is very nice with a backbone down the center to a pointy tip, half smooth, half serrated. Um, the sheath has uh, its locking mechanism here with a a plastic tab and that locks into this kind of little groove here you get a very nice audible and tactile click when it's in and to remove the knife you push down and up that can be done in one nice easy motion and it holds it in place very well however this knife only has slots for leg straps for thinner leg straps it doesn't have a slot to hold it on your belt so that renders this knife useless for my application as a dive knife next knife is very popular uh, especially on youtube and the internet uh, being hailed as like <laughs> an amazing knife this is the uh, Salvomar Predator knife, and that's a play on words. The last end is Thor. Um, this is an acid green, but to me it looks more like a lime green. Uh, this is $34. The length is short. It's 67 centimeters. This has a belt only attachment. The shape of the blade is pretty flat. There's no there's no backbone ridge on this knife, uh, which lowers its strength significantly. And it does have half serrations, but these serrations are not sharp at all. It's pretty sad. And the smooth edge is very nice on the other side. Uh, this blade has rusted significantly with just one day of saltwater exposure. Uh, the handle itself uh, on visual inspection looks like it will be very grippy because of these scales. But unfortunately, Salomar decided to make a very large flat uh, part of it on the on the part your hands, your palm will touch the most uh, so that they can put their label on it. But that makes the knife very slippery. Um, in addition to being small, if the, if the handle is gonna be small, it's gotta be super grippy. Like the Cressy knife. There's rubbery serrations, serrations where you need it. You need the serrations on the, the forward end and the back end. 
that's where your hands are gonna squeeze onto it and, and it prevents the knife from sliding up and down. So I would not recommend the Salvamar in its current configuration. The, the sheath is, it does appear to be very robust. It has a plastic tab that holds it in place. Um, but if you slide the, the blade up the sheath, it gets stuck right here. You have to aim for a little slot to get that knife in. But once it's in, it clips well and it's secure. But that's that's more work than I want to do when I'm uh, putting my knife back into the sheath. If you compare that to the rife, the rife has this smooth edge, so you can track this blade down the smooth edge all the way into the knife without thinking about it. Next knife is called a Scuba Choice Scuba 10 inch heavy duty stainless steel point tip dive knife with two knife straps. This knife sells for $28. It's 120 cm's long on the blade length uh, this is a very hefty knife. It has a backbone in the center, but then it kind of curls. A lot of knives do this, and it's common because you get a, a better cutting ability with a curved edge. But that's not what I'm doing with this knife. I'm dispatching fish generally, or I'm cutting rope to save my life. So I don't want a curled tip like that. That's going to make it harder for me to dispatch fish. The serrations are nice and sharp. It has a line cutter here. This states uh, 403 stainless steel and it has a metal piece at the base to tap onto your dive tank and that makes a very distinctive sound to let your fellow dive divers know that you're trying to signal them. And that's very effective. The uh, sheath is very thick and of a, you know, kind of a slippery plastic kind of feel to it. Uh, it has a plastic tab with, uh, no, it feels like it has springs in there. So that metal spring, I don't know how that's going to hold up with salt water over time. Um, but when that clicks in very nicely, good retention. Um, however, this only has two slots for leg straps. It doesn't have a slot for a belt strap. So for my intentions of diving, um, this is not gonna work out for me. Next knife, we have the Promate. Uh, point tip scuba dive BC knife, three inch blade, $25. I measured the blade at 79 CMs. And the blade is pretty wide. So a wide blade, again, is hard, makes it hard to dispatch fish. The serrations are nice and sharp, has a line cutter here, which can be helpful, especially for cutting off of like thick mono line. That works well. Um, it does have a backbone in the center to give that tip some strength. Um, the grip of this handle is very nice. It has a little notch here to put your finger over. Um, generally speaking, when you're diving, spear fishing, you're using gloves. So these kind of features might not work as well with gloves on, but um, without the gloves, it feels nice. It has the, uh, the back metal little tab here for the signaling underwater with the scuba tank. The holster has a very nice click into it, stays in place very nicely. 
It has two holes for leg straps, and it has a large one in the center for a belt. However, these screws are protruding, and these screw heads are going to be rubbing onto your hip all day long. That might not be so comfortable. But, um, you know, comfort's kind of a minor thing with when you're talking about a tool to save your life. So it's not a bad knife. Uh, for $25, you could do worse. Next knife is the Scuba Choice Scuba Dive Low Profile Free Dive Spear Fishing 7.5 inch stainless point tip knife. At $12, this is a 93 centimeter inch blade, 93 centimeter length blade. Um, again, it has that curved tip to it. It does have a line cutter. It, the back end of this knife is totally flat and dull. So it only has one side that has serrations and then another side that has the little blade tip there. The handle is very wide and it has these plastic spring tabs to lock the knife in place. Now, I don't believe uh, that this knife is a full tang knife. Um, you know, you can tell by the weight is uh, a little blade heavy, uh, you know, blade edge heavy, and it's it's relatively lightweight. So the blade itself feels very robust and thick, but down here in the handle, this feels like very thin plastic, and these tabs go through the handle the whole way. So that means your whole handle has like a millimeter thick of material on both sides of this lower grade plastic. So I don't know how long this is gonna last. Uh, the handle, the blade itself seems okay as far as um, thickness. And it says uh, stainless steel 420 J2 from Japan. Um, you know, for $12, I don't know if I believe that, but that would be uh, impressive if that were true. The uh, sheath locks in very nicely. It has a very nice um, belt slot with uh, recessed screws. So very uh, comfy. Uh, this is not a bad knife. If, you have, if all you have is $12, this might be a very good uh, knife for you. That's available on Amazon. And then we have uh, an older knife. This design, there's a hundred of companies, a hundred different companies that will put their name on it. But uh, this is how it looks. And so you have this backbone down the center. And it's kind of a rounded pointy tip not super pointy. Uh, one side is half serrated and half smooth and the other side is full smooth. It's a one piece of metal so you're not dealing with uh, handle um, weakness which is good if you're gonna get a cheap knife um, you know having it more durable than than fragile is definitely a good way to go. Uh, the sheath has a spring-loaded uh, retention clip and very audible and nice clip uh, however that spring in there is metal and it does rust very quickly very easily so you will have a rusty mess um, in your dive equipment if you go with this knife and it also only has uh, leg strap uh, attachment points and one of them has broken but you know, I'm kind of rough with my equipment, so don't, don't hold it against it for that. 
but uh, because it doesn't attach to the belt, I don't use this for diving anymore. So that's my uh, complete uh, review of all the uh, dive knives that I found on Amazon that I thought maybe I, were, I was interested in purchasing. And it started off with two, then I got a few more, then I got a few more, and now I ended up with 11 knives. And I figured I'd, I'd do a review to help fellow divers out. Um, and kind of with my experienced opinion and wanted to share my thoughts on what's out there. And that being said, um, this is the knife I'm gonna stay with and trust my life with. Uh, Sixty-five dollars, you know, it's it's not cheap, but uh, I can afford that uh, for for how important of a tool it is and how long I think this knife will last me. Uh, I think that's not a bad that's not a bad uh, trade-off. So you guys make your decisions, and if you like this video, just uh, give me a thumbs up. That'll help out. And if you are a knife manufacturer and would like me to review your knife. I can definitely get more into detail and would be happy to do so. Have a good day.